Hey guys, welcome back. We're starting to get into the fun stuff. Over the next few weeks, we will be going into the details of the combat system in the Hubworld MMO example project and how we use the gameplay ability system and enhanced input. Today, we are going to discuss per project gameplay ability systems, why they are required and how to set them up. Let's get started. Why do I need a per project gameplay ability system? So the gameplay ability system plugin provided by Epic is not ready to use. It is a framework to build on with C++ and then use in your game project. ODBS 1 had a simple default implementation of the gameplay ability system to allow BP only developers the ability to use it. ODBS 2 has that default implementation for backwards compatibility but the new recommended method is to add your own gameplay ability system and not inherit from ODBS character with abilities. So that's exactly what we're going to do in the Hub World MMO example project. So do we put this gameplay ability system component on the player state or the character? The gameplay ability system component is designed to be added to either the player state or the character. Let's take a look at Epic's recommendation. In a question and answer session with Epic a few years ago, related to the gameplay ability system, a question like this was asked. It's question number five. We know that the ability system component lives on the player state in Paragon and Fortnite and on the character in the action RPG sample. What are Epic's internal rules, guidelines, or recommendations for where the ability system component should live? What should its owner be? Here's Epic's response. In general, I would say anything that does not need to respawn should have the owner and avatar actor be the same thing. Now to understand what they're saying here, you have to understand that the gameplay ability system component has two pointers. One pointer is to the owner and the other pointer is to the avatar. So these are two pointers that you can, that you can control. When you add the gameplay ability system component to the player state, the owner is the player state and the avatar is the character. But when you add the gameplay ability system component to the character, the owner and the avatar actor are the same pointer, right? So whether you use avatar or owner, it's going to be the same thing. So you can see here they're saying when you don't need a respawn mechanism, then the owner and avatar actor should be the same thing. What this means is they're saying, add it to the character. Anything like AI enemies, buildings, world props, etc. Anything that does respawn should have the owner and avatar be different so that the ability system component does not need to be saved off, recreated, restored after a respawn. Player state is the logical choice. It is replicated to all clients, whereas player controller is not. So what they're telling you here is that you can't put it on the player controller because the player controller only replicates to the owner, but the player state replicates to, to all other clients. Now, the downside is player states are always relevant, so you can run into problems in 100 player games. See notes on what Fortnite did in question number three. So they are acknowledging here that when you put it on the player state, you're running into an issue in that player states are relevant to everyone in the game, not just the people around you who should know about what's happening in your gameplay ability system component. Now they have a, in question number three, they have a answer as to how they handled that in Fortnite. So Epic's recommendation is to add it to the player state for playable characters that need to respawn and directly to the character or pawn for AI enemies, world props, and characters that don't need to respawn. The primary reason for adding the gameplay ability system component to the player state is so that its lifetime can extend beyond the lifetime of the character. For persistent world multiplayer games, like what we build, the lifetime of the player state and the character are usually identical. In the Hubworld MMO example project, we will be placing the gameplay ability system component directly on the character. This provides the simplest implementation and we don't have to deal with the always relevant player state problem. Now this may be different than what you have seen in other places and that's because 
other developers in Unreal Engine are not building games like we are. We're building persistent world multiplayer games, which are quite different than deathmatch games, MOBA games, survival games, many different. So for them, player state probably is the best place to do it because they need to deal with a respawn mechanism. Uh, in persistent world multiplayer games like we build, there isn't the concept of a respawn. And so there's no need for us to destroy that character. And so we use Epic's recommendation to add the gameplay ability system component directly to the character. Okay, let's go through the steps to add a per project gameplay ability system. So the first thing we need to do is to create our own ability system component class that inherits from view ability system component. Since the Hubworld MMO project already has the gameplay ability system added, and I want to show how to add it, I've created a blank third person example project. Let's add our custom ability system component. We go to tools, do C class, all classes, and we'll start typing ability system. Component, and you'll notice it's not there, right? Okay, so the first thing we got to do is we got to go into our project settings. And I'm sorry, not project settings. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go into our plugins, and we need to add the gameplay abilities. There we go, and we'll restart. Once we've added the plugin, we will go to tools, new C++ class, all pl classes, ability system component. And to match what we did in the hub world one, we're just gonna call it HW ability system component. We're just giving it a prefix HW here is hub world. And we're going to create the class and it's gonna create it for us in C++. This project doesn't have any C++ yet, so it's going to have to create the project as well. So it'll just take a second. Because we're adding code to the project for the first time, we're going to shut it da down and we're going to rebuild it from Visual Studio. You can see here that it has added our HW ability system component. We won't be putting any code into it right now, um, but later in a future video, we're going to need to add code to this component so that the gameplay ability system will support enhanced input because by default, it doesn't support enhanced input, but there's some code we can add to the ability system component uh, to make them play nice together. We'll just take a minute here to build the first time. I'm purposefully doing it the dumb way here so that I can throw all the possible errors so that you can see what might happen if somebody isn't doing this correctly. So you'll notice that we're getting some odd errors here. These are actually not compile errors. These are linker errors. Well, anytime we get linker errors, that means we have modules missing. So just because we added the plugin does not mean the modules are added to our C++ project. So let's go in and do that. So we're going to go into our project. We're going to go into source. And we're going to go find the build CS. This has our modules. And you can see here, here's our public dependency modules. And so let's add some to the list here. So uh, I'm going to reformat these. I like them vertical. I think they're easier to read. So I have added three of them. I have added gameplay abilities, gameplay tags, and gameplay tasks. We're not using them all right now, but eventually we will. And now we'll rebuild and that should get rid of the linker error. Okay, so now that we've created the custom ability system component, we need to create a character that we can add the gameplay ability system to. Remember, we're not using the player state, we're using the character. So let's go do that. Tools, C++. We don't have any base class at this point in this project, so we're just going to use the built-in character, and we'll just call this HW gas character. We got our little prefix and let everybody know that this is the gameplay ability system character, as opposed to a character that might not have the gameplay ability system. And we'll create the class. It's going to try to hot reload it here. 
but I'm going to cancel it. So I usually just hit reload all. This will stop the debugging, kill it, and get us back here so that we can add the code that we need to add. So now we're going to add the our new custom ability system to the HW gas character. And so to do that, uh, we need to go to our HW gas character H file, and we need to first add this static F name ability system component name. This looks a little bit interesting, uh, but it's really just a global string. Uh, in that, well, I guess it's not a string, it's an F name, it's a kind of string, but it's, it's going to look like a string to us, but it's a, it's a global name that we're going to be able to use to name the component. Uh, in, you'll see this name actually show up um, as the component name. It, there's a complex system that's not used very often in Unreal Engine where you can actually change what components are changed, are being used at inherit at levels up the inheritance it's, it's it's kind of an interesting thing and they use this ability system component name as a way to do that it's it's not it's not going to be it's not going to we're not going to be doing that it's not going to have a big effect to us but it does need to be there and so then the next thing we need to do is we need to come down to the bottom here and we're going to create private or create a u property and this is our ability system right here and so we're setting it to visible any, anywhere. We only want it for print read only. And the we're going to put it category abilities. And it needs this special thing called allow private access equals true. Um, this, you'll notice we're putting it in private. Normally, your properties are public. But this is, uh, this is the way Epic has done it in some other projects. And so we do the same thing. You'll notice here that the HW ability system component is uh, we can't find it. And so we're going to have to come up here to include. Remember that. Uh, HW gas character generated.h has to be the last line. So if we include and include after this, there's going to be a problem. So we're going to have to come up here. We're going to have to say include. And you'll notice there's a u, but that's the prefix. And so it's just going to be HW gas ability system component. You can see it suggested it for us there. And that makes this happy. So now we need to go into the CPP file. And you'll see here that it automatically created a constructor for us. And so in this constructor, we're going to need to add a little bit of code. And so we've got ability system here. And we've got create default sub object. And it is a templated function. And so the templated function just means it can work on multiple types. And so of course, you have to set the types here in between this less than and greater than sign. And so the type that we're working on is UHW ability system component. And then this is that ability system component name that um, that we were talking about. But we do need to set its value. That's a global value. We're just going to come up here at the top. And we're just going to say, hey, set ability system component name to HW gas. So that's going to be the that's going to be the component name that we're referring that to as. And then, of course, we're going to come down here and we're going to set that component to replicate it. So we want to make sure that it is replicated uh, by default here and set that value to true. So now we have added our ability system component to the HW gas character. Now we have to implement the I ability system interface. And so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to come up to our uh, HW gas character dot H, and we're going to want to add an extra inher uh, inherited uh, base class. And so in reality, C++ doesn't support interfaces. We just call it that. It, but we're able to do it because it does import, uh, it does support something called multiple inheritance. So in this case, HW gas character is inheriting from a character, but then we can use this comma and we can list more things it inherits from. Um, and so in this case, we're also going to inherit from this base class here, I ability system interface. You can see that it is unhappy. And so we're going to come up here and we're going to do an include and it's going to be ability system interface dot H. And then that should make it happy. And there we go. But remember, it's an interface. What is an interface? An interface is a promise. We just said we would implement it, but we have not kept our promise. What was the promise? The promise was 
to add a method called ability system, get ability system component. So we are going to do that. We're going to come here in the public section and we're going to paste this in. Okay, so it's force in line. Uh, what this is basically going to do is it's going to say this isn't really a function. It is not going to create it as a function in memory that it calls every time. Uh, it's just going to reduce the overhead and basically say, hey, wherever you have this at compile time, paste this in. It's kind of like a macro, but it's not the same as a macro. And, and so we're going to force force in line that because all we're really doing here is it. what this is called is this is basically creating an accessor. So you'll notice that we have the ability system as private. What that means is that only HWGAS character can access this ability system. Anything that inherits from this cannot, and any other component in the system cannot access it. And so it needs a way to access it publicly. And so it does that with the get ability system component, returns the ability system, and of course it casts it to the U ability system component, the generic type, not our custom type. In most game projects like this, I'm not doing it here to keep it simple. Um, but we would usually also have another one here that says get HW ability system component right below this. And we would not cast it. We would just return it as the inherited type rather than the base generic type. Okay, now we have to make the init ability actor info call in possessed by. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our HW gas character CPP and we are going to paste in possessed by let's come down here begin play tick set up input component we'll come here at the bottom and so what we're doing here is we're adding a possessed by uh, this will be called when this character is possessed and we are saying hey if the ability system is uh, a real value it's not null then call init ability actor info and you can see here this is where it's got that owner and avatar that we were talking about if you put this on a player state, remember that the owner would be this, but the avatar would not be this. This just means this class. It would instead, the avatar actor would be the character. In this case, it's the character, they're the same, right? Owner is character, avatar actor's character. We're sending the same value in for both. Now you can see that it's unhappy here, with possessed by, and that's because in the H file, we did not add possessed by as a definition. Okay, so we're gonna come down here and we are gonna paste in our possessed by definition. We're already in a public section, so we can remove that. And now that should make this happy. Now we're going to add our refresh ability actor info call. And so we need to add our on rep controller. We'll start out by declaring it here. There it is. Let's be together. This one's basically telling us, hey, you haven't defined it yet. We'll come over here and we will paste in our definition. And it's all happy. So basically what we're doing here, same thing. We're saying, hey, uh, when the controller gets wrapped, then we are going to make sure the ability system is not null. And if so, we are going to call refresh ability actor info. This is the minimum setup that is needed for the gameplay ability system. Now, it's not really going to do a lot at this point because we don't have any attribute sets, but that is something that we will be adding in the next video. We'll start it all up and make sure it compiles and runs. There we go. All set. So at this point, it's not really doing anything because we don't have those attribute sets, but we will handle that in the next video. If you have any questions related to this video, please leave your questions in the comment section. The Open World Server and Hub World MMO Discord link is in the video description if you want to discuss something in this video further. Like and subscribe to be notified of future videos and to help with the algorithm. Until next time, have a good one.